report. It was uh, a pleasure going through them, not in detail, but uh, it was good to hear you summarize a bit of the findings. I'm joined here with Halsha Grasik from the team of Occupational Safety and Health. Also following this portfolio, we have the head of the Vision Zero Fund. We'll talk about that in a minute, Ockert, and many colleagues, uh, Valkyrie, Paul, Wafa, um, from the branch. So, of course, the, the issue is at the heart of occupational safety and health for us. And in your second report, I think you make an important comment to say we need to be treating heat and floods as a health hazard, which they are. And, and you talked a bit about the problem and the scope of the problem. And, and the, you started off with the issue to move from mitigation to adaptation, which is also at the heart of how the safety and health issue uh, tries to prevent and protect as we are moving towards this crisis and we're in the middle of it. Um, what are we doing now? What are we doing now to protect workers and to prepare our enterprises and production processes for this for this crisis that we're at. So um, what you say, and, and you mentioned a bit in your second report about um, how the right to paid leave for sickness arising from this should be, and the right for workers to stop work if they feel that. So that's where the linkages with, with our work come. And it fully aligns with our plans as we see this urgency and the World ca Campaign coming up in April will focus uh, on climate change and impact on occupational safety and health. The campaign on safety and health at work. We're in the midst of preparing two reports. One is about the broader issues of climate change and impact on OSH, and one specific to heat stress, as we know that's the main issue. And the interesting part, you know, we we team, we all think of things from our corner of the world, but it was important to remember the indoor exposure. A lot of the work globally is on extor, uh, outdoor exposure, but indoor and outdoor and also you know, both lead to the millions and millions of workers facing injuries from the report that we will be launching. And it's too early, the details, but we're looking at least at 23 million um, injuries related to exposure to extreme heat, um, occupational exposure. Um, and that is based on, you know, year 2020. And, and we're still looking at the details of that figure, but we it's clearly affecting um, in different ways. And when we talk of climate change, you mentioned obviously flooding and heat, um, what we're going to also be looking at are all the other aspects that affect safety and health, obviously, um, the extreme weather events, including hurricanes, but also UV radiation, solar UV radiation sometimes is missed, um, with thousands and hundreds of thousands of people dying from skin cancer um, due to occupational exposure. Um, in addition to that, air pollution, which is an issue indoor and outdoor as well, um, is something that the report would cover. Also hundreds of thousands of people dying due to exposures that are exacerbated with climate change. And you do mention in your report reference to uh, food, uh, to uh, vector-borne um, diseases and other infectious diseases that are increasing due to these changing temperatures. Um, and also uh, we see in agriculture, the increase in the use of pesticides and agrochemical exposure of workers that is making it even more difficult with this uh, changing climate. And, and one hazard I think that keeps coming up and highly linked to productivity, and we'll hear about that in a minute from our colleagues as well, is the psychosocial risks associated with all of this from people feeling the threat that's very imminent and from the media globally that's covering this issue, but also from the risk of losing our jobs and income insecurity. As you're saying, some of these um, you know, companies and enterprises that are a source of livelihood for so many people may or may not you know, be become somehow um, irrelevant in, in the coming years or decades. So those are issues that are affecting the health, physical and mental health of workers. But during our, our, our work, we obviously saw a lot of policy and practice um, that's already happening. We have good new legislation on managing heat, you know, from uh, having maximum levels of exposure and temperatures, but also adaptive measures and inter interventions at the workplace level from acclimatization and hydration and having rest breaks and adapting personal protective equipment to these situations. And we also have occupational safety and health legislation that already cover a lot of these risks that are not new. It's just that we are being faced with them on a you know, really quickly and in different working patterns. So it's like you mentioned in the beginning, it's not just the temperature really that's on the wall, it's what kind of work the work 
worker is doing, what kind of energy is being spent, what kind of so that actually affects their their health uh, and not just the temperature as a as a reading on the wall, if that's even functional, as you said. And that's at the heart of OSH, occupational safety health management systems, where you need to be looking at the preventative process, but also eliminating and trying to um, alleviate the hazard with administrative controls and other forms of uh, controls before providing appropriate protective equipment. So, and, and we do look at what's functioning and what isn't, and it's not like we have a certificate, listen, we're certified, ISO, what have you, so we're covered on, on climate change um, and, and risks arising from that. So we're looking at that policy practice. One important finding is also dealing with this issue. We're talking about, you know, vector-borne diseases increasing. So that's, you know, a public health and affecting flooding. It's affecting the community and work. So the policies need to be quite coherent from different departments in the government, including environmental, including occupational health, including public health. And I think you mentioned that in your report report the linkages between the public health policies and campaigns that need to integrate uh, occupational safety and health clearly, but also uh, a broader environmental uh, policies. So I think it was quite interesting for us to, to read through that. We have a number of research and interventions in Mexico, Madagascar, maybe I'll cut through the question and answer can tell us a bit more about that. But our branch is active and planning to be more active and we're learning from your research hopefully we can expand to more sectors and maybe more region regions what you've done um and we are preparing at the ilo just for colleagues uh, interest um and govern the governing body of the ilo decided we will have a tripartite expert meeting on the impact of climate change and extreme weather events and changing patterns on occupational safety and health in 2025 so in the lead up to that as the leading technical department in occupational safety and health we're hoping to gather as much data as possible and evidence uh to advise the policy and the direction and guidance we we would be giving forward. One last point is also to say, and you know, we have people from the field who would be listening that when it comes to occupational safety health management, we do have a list of occupational diseases that is recognized and can be regulated. We do have occupational exposure limits that can be regulated. Um, we have a medical surveillance system. All of that is in place. I think we just need to now adapt it to these risks that are very present today. And you know, climate change is not something that will happen. It's something that workers and we hear from our field specialists, the global interest we're getting by choosing this topic. Um, um, for our global campaign um, of the help needed and how to best adapt immediately certain policies and, and regulations. Did I keep with my time? <laughs> Thank Fantastic. You. Thanks uh, again for your good. work and we can yeah, talk further. Thank you so much, Manal. Um, I will pass 